Author Sherman Alexi once said, humor is an antiseptic that cleans all personal wounds. He also said, I used to think the world was broken down by tribes, but I know this isn't true. The world is only broken into two tribes, the people who are and the people who aren't. That tracks. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian is a semi-autobiographical story by Sherman Alexie. Alexie is a member of the Spokane Indian tribe, who's widely recognized as an award-winning poet, novelist, and filmmaker. His achievements are even more impressive when you consider all that he's overcome. We'll get a feel for some of those obstacles through the eyes of his fictional protagonist, Arnold Spirit Jr. He's a 14-year-old Spokane Indian based loosely off of Sherman Alexie. Alright, before we get into this book, we should mention that Alexie was accused of sexual misconduct during the Me Too movement. He admitted that he has harmed women and that there were women telling the truth. And as a result of these allegations, he's lost a lot of clout in the literary community as he should. In fact, some of his awards have even been revoked, including the 2008 Best Young Adult Book Award for The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. So while obviously we don't tolerate any sort of harassment, we do want to cover the very real issues that are at the heart of this book. I'm sure people will feel certain ways. I, t I totally get it. I didn't know about any of this until I read the book. So the comments are open. Let's, we could talk it out. I don't know. Okay, and just a heads up, we're also going to be using the term Indian because that is how Alexi refers to his tribe. We, we certainly are not trying to mean any disrespect. In most cases, indigenous people prefer to be referred to by their specific tribes, so it would be, you know, Cherokee, Navajo, or in this case, Spokane Indian. In this video, we'll explore how Junior overcomes a poor education, racism, poverty, alcoholism, all in an effort to achieve his dreams. For more great book summary videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button below. If you find this video helpful, click that like button and let us know what you think. The cards are stacked against Junior from the beginning. He's born with a birth defect that causes him to have poor vision, seizures, a lisp, and 10 more teeth than the average person. Kids can be cruel, and Junior isn't lucky enough to be ignored. He's frequently made fun of, but does his best to carry on. He dreams of a life beyond the reservation, or the res as he calls it. As a matter of fact, he dreams of being a famous artist. A side note. If you read the actual book, you'll be able to see Junior's sketches in his journal entries. They're quirky and fun, and they really make you feel like you're reading a 14-year-old's journal. One of the things that keeps Junior moving forward is his enthusiasm for school. On the first day of school, he's so pumped to be learning, he opens his geometry book and puckers his lips to kiss it. Then he sees his mother's name on the inside cover and is immediately disgusted. If his mom used this textbook, it's at least 30 years old. He quickly becomes furious that education isn't treated seriously on the res. Junior chucks the book and accidentally hits his teacher Mr. P in the face and breaks his nose, and Junior is suspended. Mr. P is a white man who has guilt from years and years of beating Indian students in an effort to kill the Indian and save the child. For those of you unfamiliar with this idea, kill the Indian and save the child was this concept from the assimilation era of you guessed it, the US government's policies towards indigenous people. This horrific error involved stripping young natives of their culture in an effort to make them more white. Educators would force them to cut their braids, change their names, and abandon their native language. Essentially, after the United States' unsuccessful attempt at a full-on genocide, by taking their land, killing the buffalo, and literally putting bounties on their heads, they decided it would be a little more palatable to just do a cultural genocide instead. Let's just steal their children and destroy their culture. It's a fair compromise, right? Anyway, in an effort to do what's right for a change, Mr. P advises Junior to go to Reardon, the white high school off the res. He knows that this is Junior's best chance at a better life. As Junior puts it, the res is a million miles north of Important and two million miles west of Happy. Junior agrees that Reardon is his best shot, so he transfers. When Junior arrives at Reardon, he's met with racist remarks from other students. They call him things like Chief and Tonto. Then a jock named Roger makes a disgustingly offensive joke, so Junior punches him in the face. 
I'm not saying you should punch everyone you disagree with in the face, but you know, sometimes people deserve it. And sometimes people learn from it. Junior is proud of himself for being so brave, and he earns the respect of Roger as well. This is the point where we see a crisis in Arnold Spirit Jr.'s identity. Even though he attends school at Reardon, he still lives on the res. When he's at the White High School, he identifies as Arnold, but when he's on the res, he's Junior. Since Junior's always trying to find his tribe, he tries out for the Reardon basketball team. Ironically, they're the Reardon Indians. He makes the team and becomes the only Indian on the Indians. When Reardon plays Spokane in basketball, Junior's thrilled to play against his former school on the res. What he doesn't expect is for the entire Spokane section to literally turn and face away from him. Junior's viewed as a traitor by his tribe. They feel he's turned their back on him in favor of the privileged white community. During the game, Junior's best friend from the res, Rowdy, knocks him unconscious. Arnold Spirit Junior becomes aware of his part-time Indian status. Meanwhile, his relationships at Reardon begin to develop. Take for example, Penelope, the most popular girl in school. She also happens to be the most perfect, and she's sick of it. She begins to casually date Junior as a screw you to her father, but she does genuinely care about Junior. When she finds out that he's been walking 20 miles to and from school, she insists that Roger drives him home. 20 miles. That's like when your grandpa tells you that he walked to school 20 miles uphill both ways. You're telling me that my man was walking a marathon before school every day? Give this man a medal because I'd have dropped out. But the reason that Junior has to walk 20 miles every day is because his family's too poor to afford any other transportation. For most families on the res, poverty is the norm. One tragic example of the Spirit family's poverty involves his dog, Oscar, Junior's very best friend. You know, next to Rowdy, his human best friend. The dog becomes sick and they're unable to pay for his operation. Without even thinking about it, Junior's father shoots Oscar because a bullet only costs two cents. With poverty comes hunger. Junior often goes 18 hours without food, but he knows that his parents will eventually come home with KFC. And hey, in a weird way, hungry makes the food taste better. But Junior can't be angry with his parents. He knows no one wants to be poor. His parents did the best they could with the cards they were dealt. As Alexi puts it, poverty doesn't give you strength or teach you perseverance. No, poverty only teaches you how to be poor. And this amount of widespread poverty is one of the most insidious parts about westward expansion. The federal government gave tribes sovereignty on reservations, but it's still federal land. Since we destroyed the ecosystems that allowed the tribes to survive, we forced them into the capitalist system. But since they're on federal land, they have to jump through all kinds of hoops just to open up any kind of economic opportunity. Couple that with the fact that we didn't give American Indians full citizenship until 1924, and it's no wonder there's poverty. It's our fault. Fault. And when you're poor, you yearn for something to make the pain go away. You want to forget about your problems, and this is one of the many reasons that so many reservations are plagued with addiction and alcoholism. In Junior's case, his father was a drunk. One Christmas, his dad knew he wouldn't have enough money for presents, so he took what little money they had and disappeared on a bender. Junior's sister Mary had a drinking problem too. She's desperate to get off the reservation, so she marries a man she just met at a casino and moves to Montana with him. Some brothers were outraged, but not Junior. He's proud of his sister. She's the first person to leave the res for good. Then one day, Junior finds his mom sobbing. Mary's died in a trailer fire. She's too drunk to get out. Throughout the book, Junior discovers that he's just like millions of other people trying to find their place in the world. He's a member of many tribes. The tortilla chip loving tribe, the basketball tribe, the teenage boy tribe, and he realizes he's gonna be okay. One afternoon, Rowdy suddenly comes knocking on the door. Junior's totally taken off guard and asks if Rowdy still hates him. Rowdy says he does, but he's also bored and wants to play basketball. The two boys shoot hoops and talk for hours. Rowdy says he's been reading a book about old time Indians and that Junior's kind of like them. He's a nomad, and that's pretty cool. The book ends with the boys playing basketball late into the night. We're left with the sense that Junior will break free from the ties that hold him onto the res, but that in his heart, he'll always be a part-time Indian. Of course, we didn't have time to cover Junior's whole story in this video. If you're interested in going deeper, check out the short form guide to The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. 
Shortform makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books, complete with well-crafted exercises to help you learn faster and remember more. You can get a five-day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com slash YouTube. You can click the link in the description below. And support the author and publisher by buying The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. A link to buy the book is below as well. And finally, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next short form video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.